Queen Victoria's father. Prince Edward, Duke of Kent and Strathern, was a remarkable figure in British history. Born on the 2nd of November 1767, he was the fourth son and fifth child of King George III, but his legacy extends far beyond his royal lineage. In 1799, Prince Edward was bestowed with the prestigious titles of Duke of Kent and Strathern, as well as Earl of Dublin. This marked a turning point in his life, propelling him into positions of great importance and influence. Shortly thereafter, he assumed command as a general and became the commander-in-chief of British forces in the maritime provinces of North America. This strategic appointment showcased his military prowess and leadership skills. The Duke's journey took an adventurous turn when he became the first member of the royal family to reside in North America for an extended period. From 1791 to 1800, he immersed himself in the vibrant cultures of the New World, fostering a unique understanding of the land and its people. In fact, in 1794 he achieved yet another groundbreaking milestone by becoming the first prince to set foot in the United States, embarking on a remarkable journey from Lower Canada to Boston on foot. During his time in North America, Prince Edward made an important contribution to the cultural and linguistic fabric of the region. On the 27th of June 1792, he coined the term Canadian to encompass both French and English settlers in Upper and Lower Canada. This momentous act of linguistic diplomacy aimed to bridge the divide between the two groups and it occurred during a riot at a polling station in Charlesburg, Lower Canada. Consequently, he earned the enduring title of the father of the Canadian crown, symbolising his profound impact on the development of Canada. Prince Edward's illustrious career continued to flourish upon his return to Europe, and in 1802 he was appointed Governor of Gibraltar, a position he held until his untimely death in 1820. Throughout his life, he demonstrated a deep commitment to the armed forces, culminating in his appointment as Field Marshal of the Forces in 1805. Although Prince Edward's time on earth was tragically cut short, his legacy endured through his only child, Victoria. Seventeen years after his passing, Victoria ascended to the throne and became the iconic Queen of the United Kingdom. Thus his spirit lives on, forever intertwined with the pages of history. Prince Edward made his grand entrance into the world on the 2nd of November 1767 as a cherished offspring of King George III and Queen Charlotte. Being fourth in line to the British throne, his birth held great significance for the royal family and the nation. Coincidentally, he was named after his late uncle, the Duke of York in Albany, who had recently passed away and was laid to rest at Westminster Abbey on the eve of Edward's arrival. The young prince received his baptism on the 30th of November 1767 in a solemn ceremony that united him with his godparents. These esteemed individuals included the hereditary Prince of Brunswick, Lunenburg, who stood as a proxy for his paternal uncle through marriage, the Earl of Hertford, the Earl of Huntingdon, and who acted on behalf of Duke Charles of mecklenburg strelitz Edward's maternal uncle, and the hereditary Princess of Brunswick, Wolfenbüttel, represented by a proxy due to her absence. Additionally, the Landgraving of Hesse Castle, Edward's paternal grandfather's sister, found her presence replaced by the Duchess of Argyll, who served as Lady of the Bedchamber to the Queen. This baptism marked a significant moment in Prince Edward's early life, as it connected him to a network of influential figures and established his place within the royal lineage. Prince Edward embarked on a distinguished military career that spanned continents and made a lasting impact on history. He began his training in Hanover in 1785, but changed plans upon the advice of the Duke of York, pursuing military education in Hanover. At 18, he became a brevet colonel in the British Army and continued his education in Geneva. He joined the influential Masonic Lodge de Lunion.
In 1789, Prince Edward became Colonel of the Royal Fusiliers. However, missteps led to his exile to Gibraltar as a regular officer. In 1791, he transferred to Quebec, becoming the first royal to tour Upper Canada. Prince Edward rose to Major General and displayed courage during the battle. And in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where he served as Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Navy's North American Station, he shaped the city's military defences and transformed a residence into an enchanting prince's lodge. After a fall from his horse in 1798, he returned to England and was granted prestigious titles, along with the role of Commander-in-Chief of British Forces in North America. Appointed Governor of Gibraltar, his strict discipline caused a mutiny, but he refused to return to England until his successor arrived. He was promoted to Field Marshal and appointed Ranger of Hampton Court Park, and Prince Edward balanced military discipline with friendliness, supporting social experiments and advocating for Catholic emancipation. Prince Edward's career showcased his passion for military service, his impact on various regions and his commitment to social causes. Following the untimely death of Princess Charlotte of Wales in 1817, the British royal succession faced uncertainty. The Prince Regent George IV and his brother Frederick, Duke of York and Albany, were estranged from their wives and had no legitimate surviving children. The king's daughters were childless and his unmarried sons rushed to secure marriages to ensure an heir to the throne. Among them was Prince Edward, Duke of Kent. At the age of 50, Prince Edward sought a suitable marriage partner and became engaged to Princess Victoria of saxe coburg selfeld the sister-in-law of his late niece, Princess Charlotte. The couple married on the 29th of May, 1818, at a palace in Coburg and had a second ceremony on the 11th of July 1818 at Kew Palace in Surrey. Princess Victoria was the daughter of Francis, Duke of saxe coburg selfeld and the sister of Prince Leopold, who had been married to Princess Charlotte. She was a widow having been previously married to Emmett Carl, second Prince of Lenigan, with whom she had two children. On the 24th of May 1819, the Duke and Duchess of Kent welcomed their only child, a daughter named Alexandrina Victoria. The Duke took great pride in his daughter, even predicting that she would one day become the Queen of the United Kingdom. Throughout his life, the Duke of Kent had various reported mistresses, while in Geneva he had relationships with Adeline Dubas and Anne-Marie. Madame de Saint Laurent, also known as Julie de Saint Laurent, accompanied him to Canada in 1791 and remained by his side for 28 years until his marriage to Princess Victoria in 1818. Despite claims of descendants from these relationships, thorough research has confirmed that no children were born from any of these unions. Prince Edward's marriage to Princess Victoria solidified his place in the royal succession and eventually led to the birth of Queen Victoria, one of the most significant monarchs in British history. In his later life and in 1801, the Duke of Kent acquired Castle Hill Lodge in Ealing, West London, purchasing it from Maria Fitzherbert. Architect James Wyatt was enlisted to enhance the property and over £100,000 or £8.1 in 2021 was invested in its renovation. Notably, the Duke's neighbours from 1815 to 1817 were John Quincy Adams, the future US President, and his English wife Louisa. Adams documented attending church with the Duke of Kent and hearing a sermon by Dr Crane in August 1815. After the birth of Princess Victoria in 1819, the Duke and Duchess sought a cost-affected residence to manage their significant debts. They opted to lease Warbrook Cottage, situated by the seaside in Sidmouth, Devon. They intended to keep a low profile during their stay. Tragically, the Duke of Kent succumbed to pneumonia on the 23rd of January 1820 at Warbrook Cottage in Sidmouth. He was laid to rest in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle and his passing occurred just six days before the death of his father, King George III, and less than a year after the birth of his daughter.
as the duke predeceased his father and elder brothers, and none of his elder brothers had surviving legitimate children, his daughter Victoria ascended to the throne following the demise of her uncle King William IV in 1837. She went on to reign until 1901. In 1829, the Duke's former aide acquired Castle Hill Lodge from the Duchess in an attempt to alleviate her financial burdens. The debts were ultimately settled after Victoria assumed the throne and gradually paid them off from her own income.